Greetings, Stu. Hey, he's in New Zealand. Uh, okay, that must mean we're live, right? Cool. Uh, yeah, people are still trickling in. Yeah, okay, right. right. We're going to have a couple minute trickle in. That's right. Action. This has got to be one of the most awkward things in the history of like television or whatever you call this, where you wait for people to arrive yeah. and you pretend to talk about things that aren't really on the subject that you're supposed to talk about. <laughs> To gather an audience, it's very uh, hand wringingly awkward, yeah. isn't it? Can't imagine Walter Cronkite doing that. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's dead. The guy's a player. He's just fine. All right. Yeah. Everyone looks. How we doing? Um, one time welcome, welcome. On. Come on in. Come on in. Timmy. Plenty of room. What are we like around, five? You want to talk about our new angle that we're showing up to? Uh, your new angle. Welcome to the design studio. From that side. Usually yes. we shoot this direction. Today we're shooting this direction. That's Petro Hill. Oh man, Hill. that looks great. Petro really Hill cool. in the background. Look at that. Hey, oh, yo, zoom. bring a shade up. No, don't do that. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. It's gonna blow. All right. All right. Apparently, light. I don't know a lot about cameras. Cool. Um, so yeah, Soft Goods team sits over here. Hard Good folks over yonder. This is kind of our general multi-purpose workspace, Dude. and uh, we're at the we're kind of at the sewing table right now. Vic, can you see the door at all to the other side of the office? There. Oh yes. What happens over there? Well, nothing because it's Friday. These whole super liberal working policies, work from home, uh, are being well taken advantage of, which is pretty great because we all do it. But. Um, We've got to get to Oh, that's enough. Okay, let's, uh, hey, art. Great, art. Oh, I see. That's what is not that? a furry bug. Oh, that's the microphone. What the hell is this with fuzzball stuck right. on the end of the table? 250 right. folks, that's enough to say <laughs> welcome. Uh, welcome to our, uh, to our backers, our eighth set of backers here on Kickstarter. My, how the platform has grown, um, as has this company, uh, oddly enough, because of the platform and backers like you. Um, so thanks for being with here, uh, with us here this Friday. Um, I've got my trusty old pal, Art Vijay, who's been with me since nearly the very beginning, um, our lead designer at Peak Design. Say hello, Arthur. Hello, Art Vijay. Nice to meet you. Um, and I am the guy, Peter Daring, who was very lucky uh, enough to have a neat idea back in the day that worked on this platform and got to launch this incredible company and work with a ton of friends and... Uh, it's been a total dream, and I like saying that every time, and I'm extremely grateful and aware of how lucky we've been in getting here. Um, I think uh, one thing that's interesting is uh, it's been about two years since you guys last saw us on this platform here when we had a backpack. Um, uh, that was our last backpack production. So we've, spent, we've had a two-year gap in designing soft goods. And I mention that because what you see on the Kickstarter right now is kind of our magnum, our magnum opus when it comes to travel, at least for, for the time being. The 45 liter travel backpack is squarely, we believe, the best product for travel. Um, but there's lots of ways to skin a cat. And uh, this whole journey of travel backpack actually began far more along the, the world of uh, travel duffels and a lot of arts early ideations were more in that vein and um, you know it was kind of a push and pull between the design team and art and myself as to which kind of format of carry was going to win out um, and I absolutely love the travel backpack and it's it's my favorite product that we've ever made but these two products <laughs> these two products are similarly uh, wonderful and have an important part in this line. We didn't really think that we'd get them out in time for this Kickstarter, but here we are. It's Friday, September 7th, and we're pumped to show them to you. So Art, make them away, toys. Right, so um, <clears throat> we have two different uh, bag formats here um, that we think uh, fill a really great and needed niche in the kind of way that people uh, carry gear for various different types of travel situations. So um, in, like P Pete said, with the travel backpack, um, the way I really like to think of the travel backpack is kind of the, 
it's a bit of a quiver killer. It's kind of it does everything. Uh, it can act like a duffel, but primarily the format and the feature set that it has, which is a very robust feature set. Um, is based around a bag that you live and work out of on the road. And that means that it can be your one bag carry or an accompanying uh, bag to a roller or a small day bag or something like that. Um, these duffels are more about point A to point B transportation. So getting your gear, your clothing, or your camera gear, whatever it is, from, from your house to where you're going, and then you kind of leave them there, and then you kind of set out with your day bag or your everyday backpack or your travel backpack or whatever that is. You're not gonna wanna carry these around all day. As a result, they have a feature set that is much more tailored to that style of travel. They're much just, they're more about just being a big, clean, accessible volume uh, that is a great experience to carry around. Um, so they don't have uh, features like uh, laptop storage or you know dedicated water bottle pockets and tablet sleeves and all of these things that we love about a good backpack um, don't really apply once you kind of assume that these aren't the only bags you're carrying you probably have an additional uh, backpack with these so they're great accompanying bags um, to the travel backpack and you know uh, or the everyday backpack or you know all kinds of other Certainly. things. Certainly, so. yeah. I think, Art, something you should mention <clears throat> is that the purpose of this Hangout today is, is introdu introducing it sure. to sort of where they fall in terms of development and that right now we're not really asking people to back these. Yeah, yeah, sure. Getting you pumped up, getting your feedback. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is a little bit different than what we've done in the past on Kickstarter uh, in that these bags are, the concepts around them are formed uh, I would say they're well formed, but the details and the sizing and a lot and some of the feature set and some of the materiality and all of these things are are not. I would say that these are like halfway through development, whereas the travel backpack was pretty darn far through development by the time we showed it to you. Um, and that's cool for a number of reasons because we're going to put out a survey uh, to you folks and get your feedback on what you think of these things and that will help steer the final uh, kind of direction of these things and polish everything up um, and it's also cool because uh, yeah it's just you get a little bit of a peek behind the curtain and see some some rough prototypes and um, uh, we, we get to put more cool products into the campaign um, it's worth noting about delivery and stuff. I don't know if you want to sure. touch down that road. Yeah, uh, we're this is this is a secondary fulfillment. This you know we have got we have been cranking in Vietnam on the travel tools and uh, the travel backpack, and we are ready to fulfill that by our <coughs> promised date. We've been saying Christmas. We'll still say Christmas. Um, I always like to think that we can beat that, and I think that we will. Um, but uh, certainly by then, but things are really progressing very smoothly. These are, like Art said, further down the line, but I have just ever increasing confidence in our supply chain's ability to take our concepts now and spin them up into reality. This is just because we've been getting deeper and deeper involved with our partners in Vietnam. Um, as our community has grown, it's given us greater scale and uh, greater ability to move quickly and move accurately, which is really cool. Yeah. So Art, I'm going to have you, let's go through the through the travel duffel first off. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Two minute high, high level, what this, what's this guy about? Cool. So um, there, there's two bags. There's a travel duffel and a travel duffel pack. And right now the sizing, thank you. Uh, the sizing that we're looking at right now for this one is, I will say this bag is a little bit smaller than what we're thinking about, um, but it's basically a carry-on size bag. So it's in the neighborhood of 22 inches long and some format that is roughly carry-on size. That being said, this is a very unstructured bag, uh, especially by peak design standards, because we tend to make pretty structured bags. Um, there's only a structural uh, piece of foam on the bottom which is to kind of protect the fabric, but also the main format for the carry is actually kind of, I like to think of it as a, uh, almost like a, like a firewood carrier, where you have these handles, and that ties into the main structure of the bag that wraps around the back. So right now this thing's all stuffed out with pillows, but if there's not that much in here, 
these sides auto kind of automatically collapse the top of the bag when you pick it up and keep things nice and tidy. A um, couple of different ways to, uh, I mean, so we this this format here it, it has these kind of. Uh, it's a straight zip with wings, so what that does is gives you really, really big, huge open access, even better than uh, a U-zip would provide, but keeps the, the zip, uh, zipping experience really, really quick and clean. Um, there's a, we're thinking, shoulder strap included with this guy, which is like this. And that basically allows for kind of the down by your side uh, carry. Um, and we're gonna give a, a nice uh, adjustment range on that as well, so you can do more of kind of a cross uh, style uh, carry as well. And then, so that's one way, and the way that we're attaching to these wings really kind of allows the bag to kind of wrap around your body really nicely, um, rather than just being this kind of object that you're carrying around. Um, and uh, beyond that, if you don't care about the uh, shoulder strap carry that is obviously removable, and you want to focus on just a really simple uh, hand carry. Um, we've got some hardware on the side that uh, secures uh, the ends like so. And that is just a really nice, simple uh, unit that this bag's really like about aesthetics and simplicity and kind of just really stripping away a lot of garbage. Um, and this, uh, these, this is a padded tubular webbing handles. Um, we're working on some magnetic uh, action on these to uh, clip these guys together, TVD on, uh, on that aspect of it. And um, that gives a really nice, uh, we're gonna go a little bit longer so that you can get kind of a, a, an over the shoulder carry on these guys. Um, and there's various ways that you can set these up. I don't wanna go too deep into that and over promise because like I said, these are like halfway through development. We're still messing around with a lot of different things. I can pretty much guarantee that this hardware is not going to be hook style hardware. It's going to be this new awesome flat hook style hardware that we're developing. Um, and yeah, a couple of pockets um, on the sides that we're going to add in here for very basic organization. But that is the majority of the feature set. Very cool. And uh, as far as a waterproof construction, it's... Um your opinion is that it's naturally a little more weatherproof even than, than the backpack. Fewer ingress points. Yeah, fewer ingress points. We're going to do a, um, a uh, kind of uh, kissing cover uh, style uh, zipper, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually more similar to what we have on the, uh, on the double pack here. So you get a really nice uh, covered up zipper on that. And then the patterning on this bag is all about removing seams. So there's only four panels that make up the entire shape of this bag, uh, which, you know, versus uh, a, lot of, a lot of more complicated bags. It's just a lot less places for water to get in the bag. The water is fully waterproof, uh, sorry, the fabric is fully waterproof. Um, it does have seams, uh, so those are ingress points, but I mean, you really have to get the bag pretty darn soaked before you start to see any water intrusion at that point. So. No, Very not. weatherproof bag. Did you, did you talk about uh, compatibility with packing tools and accessories? Sure. We'll, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk talk about that, and then also just uh, the complementary nature, I think, of this bag, especially with the travel backpack. If you're looking to go with a non-roller setup, where you've got a backpack on, obviously a handle carry or a shoulder strap carry is going to be the best, uh, the best kind of complement. So um, that was an important thing, and kind of. Part of the reason that we wanted to get this out there during this campaign, give you the opportunity to back and show it to you. Totally. Um, yeah, internal. Um, not too much to report. What's cool about the, the construction on the internals of this, and this is not funnel fabric, so uh, what we're planning on doing is most bags that are constructed like this, mainly for a number of reasons, but there will be a liner throughout the whole bag, and that really creates a lot of like pulling away on the in on the interior of the bag. We're planning to go linerless on this bag and do an interior coating on the fabric that will be um, a, bright, um, a brighter color, probably our uh, light gray um, that we're doing on the rest of the black. So the interior of the bag will be extremely clean because it's just essentially one very thick, well-coated piece of fabric rather than 
a burly piece of fabric and then a floppy kind of shitty liner fabric floating around inside. Um, yeah, so, and probably some very light organization inside, but um, again, trying to kind of strive for simplicity on this one. So, right on. Yeah. Fitting of the cubes, uh, as far as kind of our packing unit system, this thing will fit one, two, three cubes. Um, at, the, at the moment, this current size uh, falls about four centimeters short from doing that, but um, yeah. that is our, our object. So I think just for, it's, it's important to kind of show, this is the width of our a loaded cube right now. Yeah. Yeah, so the idea is that you would be able to fit three one, of two, our three. kind of units, one, and then this is the medium size, which is two, two packing units, basically. Right. So. And so you can see that that dimension is going to need to grow slightly, yeah. um, circumferentially, and um, but it will be able to wrap around and, and provide a really nice shape and hold those. Totally. Um, and I also think it's, it's, it's worth mentioning even that I think that it's important, you know, the travel, the travel backpack being as full featured as it is, um, it certainly warrants the, pr the, the retail price tag that it has of $299. Um, but you know we we certainly appreciate that 299 bucks is a lot to spend and if you can get into our system of packing tools at a lower price point that you're more comfortable with it's not going to be as full featured it's a vastly different experience but we still want you to have that ability to have a peak design product that works with our travel tools yeah. cool so that's the duffel and then this is the the duffel pack and the way that things are shaking out right now is that these bags are designed around uh, what we think makes sense to carry this much gear. So that is a carry-on size um, bag at about 35, 40 liters somewhere in there. And this bag starts in this state at about 45 liters. So it's 26 inches long, which is uh, four inches longer than the max carry-on size, but about the same diameter as um, like a standard carry-on size backpack. Um, but this bag, because when you're carrying this much stuff, it's pretty easy, especially if you're going just anywhere with like a cold climate or you're uh, bringing a lot of gear, like I think of like going like on a ski or snowboard trip or doing any sort of like hiking or climbing or you're just transporting a lot of gear to the trailhead. Um, this is a great feature that you're gonna like for that and that is that basically there are these um, expansion zips on either side here like this and that basically lets the bag open up uh, and it means about 15 extra liters, 15 to 20 extra liters of volume, it's a huge amount of extra volume. And that really just, it's not the primary way that I would want to carry the bag necessarily, I mean frankly because it would weigh a lot with that much weight, um, but it's a great kind of like overflow emergency option. And frankly, if you're carrying a bunch of big, bulky stuff like whatever, jackets and blankets and who knows what, um, yeah, is like a really great, uh, really great feature. So I'm gonna zip that back. That's right. <laughs> You can see that's a much more, th th and one thing to note is this bag is a little bit more squared up and it's based more around a, a backpack style carry like this. Um, it's, it's flatter on the back, more less uh, kind of a, of a barrel profile. Um, so that right there is about 45 liters. I think we'll actually come down in size from this state a tiny bit and we'll, we might even reduce the expansion because it's so much expansion probably more than most people need. Um, and then we've got some really cool um, storing uh, strap system on that, but let me show you what it's like to get into the bag. Um, we have currently on this guy uh, uh, Fidlock uh, hardware. So you just pull that over to the side and that releases, and then it uh, magnets down into place like so. So it's kind of a pull over to get up. And then we've got huge 
huge access. I just have this thing stuffed with fabric and all kinds of garbage right now. But uh, you can see how there's some PE stiffener boards in this, although the bag primarily is unstructured except for the bottom and the, the kind of back panel, as it were. And that just opens up kind of like a, like a doctor bag and gives you crazy huge um, access to all your gear, which is awesome. So, set that guy back up. Magnet those guys down. So, um, currently the, the kind of the duffel style carry occurs with these handles that are mounted onto the fronts of the straps, kind of where the, a sternum strap would be. Uh, probably not going to do a sternum strap on this bag just because it's designed to be carried for shorter distances than, than most backpacks due to the kind of point A to point B nature of duffel travel. Um, but that's, that's the, the way that you'd carry it, right like that. And uh, yeah, feels great. And um, also a lot of the way that the, the backpacks do this is they'll do kind of like a, a skinny strap in this thing and that kind of creates kind of an uncomfortable, weird um, backpack strap experience. Uh, the way that we've mounted these guys on the front is really comfortable. It feels just like a normal backpack strap. Uh, in addition to that, these straps um, can stow uh, similar to the travel backpack, but kind of in the, in the opposite direction, as it were, like that. So that's, I've just got the one stowed there. And um, when those straps are stowed, you would kind of be carrying that in case style here, which is actually much nicer, um, I think, for a bag of this shape because it's a lot narrower in this direction than it is in this direction, so it's not banging you in the knee. So that's kind of probably one of the primary carry styles is with those big side handles. And then we've got um, these waist straps here that actually fold out. Now, most duffel packs or duffel bags that have backpack straps on the market do not have a waist belt. Um, and it's, it's one area that we thought was a, a real opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, bring uh, a really useful feature to, I mean, frankly, like, this, is a, this bag can get extremely heavy, and that is like the one time you really want a waist strap, so it's kind of funny to give the heaviest bag, one of the heaviest bags that you carry, uh, like the weakest harness system. So because of our strap storage system, we're not penalized by, uh, by giving you um, waist straps just by uh, how they store so cleanly, you, didn't, you don't even notice that they're there. So. To, to be clear, the bag itself isn't actually particularly heavy. Uh, in fact, yeah. it's unstructured, unfoamed for the most part, so it's fairly light. Yes. Or just means that you can carry a lot. Yes. So yeah, unless you're carrying pillows, yeah, totally. it can get heavy. Definitely don't have final weights on the bag yet, but it will probably be a little bit lighter than the travel backpack just because of the reduced feature set. Um, back to that feature set real quick. Um, we do have these big, huge um, pockets on the side with this really cool perforated mesh in here. Those can definitely fit something as big as a water bottle, but you are taking up volume with those pockets from the inside a little bit. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of the beast with this bag to try and keep that nice clean profile on the outside of the bag. Um, probably have a couple of little organization pockets inside as well. But um, yeah, that's the that's the duffel pack. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Art. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. So a lot of interesting comments about uh, durability, especially in regards to checking the bag. Sure. Um, probably a few things to say both about that durability, but also intended use. You know, it is a check-in size bag, but as a gear hauler, there's a lot of intended uses that we have started to think about well beyond airline travel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, some people talking about just parts of it, like how do you think it would hold up within the checked bag system? Yeah, totally. I mean, that's a, obviously a huge important thing for all of our bags is durability. We do a lifetime warranty on all of our stuff, so um, I, these are not final materials. These are not final, you know, hardware, like I've got like little plastic hardware and stuff on this. Um, we're developing dedicated hardware for this bag right now that's all three millimeters stamped anodized uh, aluminum and um, are probably going to um, tweak this fabric, which this is, these samples right now are made in the same uh, 900D recycled polyester um, fabric with a face coating that's called a carbonate um, coating 
which is extremely durable and also has this really nice kind of leathery, rubbery hand feel to it. Um, and that's the same fabric that we use on the bottom of the travel backpack and the bottom of the everyday backpack, uh, and actually the whole everyday line for the most part, with the exception of the sling, I think it's the only bag that doesn't have that. Um, and uh, it has a amazing proven track record. Um, I've actually never seen that fabric fail, basically, in any of our, you know, we have basically every aspect of every one of our bags at some stage has failed in, you know, whatever crazy cir circumstances. There's enough bags out there and enough people doing wild stuff with them that, you know, we've seen the gamut of things that can happen to a bag, but I've actually never seen any issues with this fabric. Um, so we know that it's extremely durable, it's extremely tear resistant, it's extremely abrasion resistant, and it looks really good for a long time uh, with the, f the face coating. So. I think this fabric would do great as, on the duffel as is, but I've got like a lot of ideas right now that we're cooking um, for how to improve it and up, eat up the durability even more and up the uh, weatherproofness even more. Um, so more, more to come. I on think that. I, I saw that some people were more concerned about like oh, okay. the the wings, sort of, mm. um, if you will, yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, a, bit. Uh, a combination of things. The, yeah. the, the wings, the nature of the panels coming down, and mm -hmm. then sort of when everything is secured in, uh, quickly being able to move it around without having to deploy. Sort of yeah. Well, yeah. So there are grab handles on here. So it, it, in the event that everything is stowed, um, like so. Um, and this is going to improve. There's like nine reasons why this is. It works well but not amazingly and I can sort of a proof of concept yeah this is a proof of concept essentially so totally. I, I won't go down that road but know that it will get significantly better um, there is robust um, grab handles um, on either side of the bag that would be kind of like a, a grab and go kind of case style carry um, we have tossed around the idea of doing a separate shoulder strap that would likely mount um, to either uh, probably somewhere in here, like so. Uh, but it kind of depends on feedback that you guys give us about whether you think you need backpack straps and a shoulder strap. I personally don't think you do um, because the backpack straps on this thing are great. But that's you know that's my opinion. So. Right. Right. Cool. Cool. What other hot questions? Oh, sorry, zooming in on Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, I mean now. Other hot questions. Um, there were, I saw a few questions about capture compatibility, which is... Mm. Yeah, so features like that, like capture compatibility, are really all about when you're working out of the bag. When you're traveling and the bag is your primary kind of like work platform for photography or, you know, travel or walking around and stuff. These are really supplementary things. Um, that's, that's the best way that I would think about them. I don't think... I, I, I'm sure people will, but the primary use case for these things is holding a lot of gear, getting it from point A to point B, and keeping things pretty simple and clean on the outside, whereas things like uh, capture attachment points and all of that is something that's much more of a dedicated backpack or sling bag or messenger uh, style feature. Which is all, there's, and part of that also is that we want these to be accompanying bags for some of our more full featured bags. And the more we can keep the cost down on that, the more likely that is to be a scenario. Yeah. Sure. Um, did you talk about compatibility with the packing tools on the duffel pack? You know, it's, it's a unit bigger. Right, yeah, so size-wise on this one, in its, in its, uh, kind of, unexpanded state. This bag is four units. It's like four and a tiny bit. Um, you can probably do a four and a tech pouch or a field pouch um, in there. Uh, so one, two, three, four um, for that. Um, so this is a little bit oversized right now, but not too much. It's actually pretty close. And um, un undetermined whether or not we're going to do um, the C-clip um, system that allows you to uh, lash these 
into the into the bag, mainly because we're trying to like think of a use case where that's really necessary, um, because of, just because of the nature of the way that people use bags like this. The, what the C clips allow you to do is basically attach it to the inside of the bag, and so that when you open the bag, you can leave the camera cubes open and kind of you know fold the lid back like so, and then have. Uh, one zip access to your gear. Um, it's just unclear if that's actually a useful thing or not. We're going to be messing around with that in our next rounds of prototypes. And uh, if that's something that is super important to you, let us know about it in the survey. And, uh, we actually got a question that I'm seeing Hicks is kind of talking about, but uh, that I think ties into that. Someone was asking, like, why would I do this instead of a Pelican? And I think that, well, those are, they're just a very dedicated sort of thought process. Because it weighs process half as much. <laughs> but we're, I mean, but I think if you've got gear, if you've got your stuff and you're traveling, what sure. we would want is for you to have that on your person. Put it on the backpack, the travel backpack. We just made that bag. It was perfect. And if you've got that thing filled out with a large camera cube and you still need to pack out with your clothes and a jacket and shoes, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Exactly. This lets you do that. Yeah. You've got your expensives with you on the plane check the other stuff. Right, yeah, so what he's saying is basically if you're using the travel backpack fully packed out as your pure photography kit, which I'm sure a lot of people will do, I mean, unless you're traveling extremely lightly, you're probably going to need a secondary bag to, to carry clothing, especially if you're going anywhere that isn't balmy and tropical, because <laughs> basically a jacket takes up a lot of space. So um, that's where you know a secondary companion bag would be. You check something like this or check that, and um, you would carry on all your uh, camera gear because I know people don't like to check their uh, photography equipment for good reason. Um, I know I don't like to. So. Sure, and yeah, and and also we're not pretending that this is. Some people do check Pelican cases sure. full of camera gear because sometimes that's required. That's a different use case, and we're definitely not trying to supplant that need. Yeah, I wouldn't say that this is competing with the Pelican case. I think the Pelican case is all about that maximum protection checkable stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure people will check camera gear in here, but it's really based on the assumption that from the majority of photographers that we've talked to, unless you're a serious pro carting a lot of equipment around, people don't like to check their camera gear. Yeah. So, so we've had... If you feel differently, let us know. There's been uh, some people who have kind of logged in and may, might have missed the intro in terms mm. of how far these are into development versus when we first showed up the travel sure. totally. and additionally uh, what is the goal of our hangout today and when are these going to be available so totally. I think I can feel that the goal of the hangout today is show you these concepts kind of get the get the stoke going be able to gauge like uh, first off gauge is this more interesting to people or is this more interesting to people um, we're hoping that they're both interesting to people. And then as we uh, prepare for the next round of prototype, which Art is going to be working over the weekend in order to finalize those designs, we want to get your feedback. And so a little bit later today, we're going to be putting out a survey um, that helps advance this design towards that next prototype. We hope to get that in. Um, by next Friday would be spectacular. It will probably happen by next Monday. And we want to make available for uh, backing on the campaign, either Monday or Tuesday, these two bags. It'll either be available as an add-on only or even as an, as an individual re reward. We're not quite certain yet. Um, so this is to get feedback, get the excitement going, get a little more knowledge for last week of the campaign, release it for availability. And should, is that a good place to talk about deliver, delivery, separate delivery? As yeah, well? separate, separate delivery. I talked about that before. Separate fulfillment. Um, we are saying April is when we expect to be able to fulfill these. Um, I think that we say that fairly confidently um, because although the, the details, I mean, certainly the devil's in the details, but we get to do things like kick off fabrics and normally that has like a 60 day lead time and we'll be able to do that while working out some of the finer details yeah. and um, so when we say April we're, we're quite confident in our ability to hit to hit that yeah so we feel like we have fairly well formed concepts here it, it really is that last 30% of all of the details and kind of uh, features and 
uh, materials and everything that will get dialed in, and uh, I have a pretty high level of confidence in our ability to do that. So, yeah. Uh, yep. People would like to know roughly what might these cost. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's kind of it's a big topic of discussion here. Um, uh, there. What we put we put a range of costs up on on our type form, and you'll see that right now. This one, yeah, in the I, I believe, in in our in our survey, uh, I believe we're looking at somewhere between 129 and 189 for this one, yep. kind of depending on how much uh, how, how much uh, bill of materials cost goes into the um, goes into the cost. Yeah. Um, this one right here, uh, same same calculation basically, and it's going to land somewhere between 199 dollars and 299 dollars. Um, for me personally, uh, I I'd like to see this one remain uh, feature reduced and, and and free of the things that that add cost to it, um, because I think for the big gear hauling type of mechanism and for it to be a simple product, um, you know, I I tend towards liking the, the 199 dollar price point, but we got to make it the best bag that you know for that that it can be, and so we're going to allow that potentially to creep up. Um, even as much as the travel backpack. It is an extremely high quality bag. It has great versatility. And if we do price it uh, on that upper end of it, it's because the cost of making it warrants that. And we think the value to the customer also warrants that. Yeah. Um, those are our calculations when we figure out price. Kind of d depends on how our, the final, I, I would say the main drivers are the final hardware package that we settle on for everything because that uh, our hardware is a, a big driver for cost because we do so much custom high-end hardware on our bags. And then also, like Pete said, the feature set and that's going to be largely driven by the survey. So if people want all the bells and whistles on these bags, then that will obviously affect the, uh, the bill of materials at the end of the day and the MSRP. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. Cool. Yeah. So we're leaving it open ended at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a handful of questions about, especially on the duffel bag, um, if people want to use it as a gym bag, mm. uh, subdiv subdividing that space, smells, odors, mm -hmm. moisture. Yeah, totally. Uh, currently, it's just one space, um, but that is kind of why we made the shoe bag um, rather than forcing the that sort of uh, functionality into what essentially would be, I mean, because a, sh a place to put shoes is a really handy thing to have on a lot of different travel bags. Mm -hmm. And basically, we would feel obligated to force that, f that feature into all of the bags. And for people who don't want that feature, that's kind of a, like, for me personally, like, I don't actually want that for a number of reasons. But so that is a detractor for me, not a feature. So that's why we decided to break that um, functionality off into the shoe bag, which obviously will work beautifully in mm -hmm. this bag here. That's right. Yep, it'll work great as a, as a gym duffel. Yep. Um, you know, the only thing that where it's going to, like, is, as far as, we even kicked around the idea of putting this in the everyday line. Um, but the fact is, you can't carry a laptop with it, and many folks need to carry a laptop to and from, from work, so I don't think we can justifiably call it an everyday bag. Um, that being said, if you don't, uh, if, that, if that's not you, if you don't need a laptop, you can have it as an everyday duffel. Yep. Totally. Yep. Cool. Uh, what else you got there, Lawrence? Um, I think we handled most of the questions. Uh, I, would, I would just say, uh, you know, we've got eyes on the chat right now. If anyone wants to throw in any more questions, uh, Just talk. Just about talk that. on that. <laughs> Can smaller duffel get more handles on sides for better access? More handles on the smaller handles. duffel. I, I'm definitely messing around with that. The next prototype that I have uh, has end handles as well, which is great for kind of uh. gr grabbing in and out of the bag. Actually, that's would could be potentially nice on this one as well. Again sort of the goal is to keep things very uh, simple and clean so we're only get, we're not going to throw in as much you know anything that is useful we're not going to throw the kitchen sink on these guys but um, if it's something that feels 
feels necessary, um, mm -hmm. we'll leave it in there. So, yeah, the next sample round that I have um, develop in development right now, I actually am doing a black and a sage um, sample that are coming in, and they have like 20 different tweaks and hardware packages and handle configurations and all this stuff, and we're hoping to show those to you guys next week. So. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Well, uh, if there's not too much more, I'll cut it off there just because we've got some work to do in creating that follow-up survey and making sure it's got all the right questions. Totally. Um, but we are uh, grateful for you spending, spending some of your time with us this afternoon or morning or night, wherever it is that you are in the world. Um, and it's going to be a really fun remaining 13 days of the campaign. So thanks for with, being with us so far. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. There's a, just, just, there's a bunch of general questions. Okay. As always, you can ask Stu and Adam Hicks on the general comment board on the Kickstarter page. And uh, that's, that's the best place for us. Ten four. Well, I'll, I'll relegate the whole question specifically to the survey for first. Um, so if you've got duffel related things, let's funnel those to the survey that yep. we're going to link in a update in just a little bit. And then, like Alyssa was saying, every all your questions about the accessories, the rest of the travel bag, uh, the 45 liter travel backpack, all that stuff, keep going on the comment section. Hicks and Stu are going strong there, and they'll get your answers. Cool. Okay. And where can they find the survey? Uh, survey will be in the update. Cool. We'll post in just a little while. All right. Stand by. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Thank Happy you. Friday.